Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome everyone to the first session of the WBSC Women's Baseball Seminars. Today, we'll be talking about developing a women's program. We're excited to be providing information that will help, to help the development and growth of women's baseball around the world. And super excited that you have joined us tonight or this morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Narelle Gostre. I'm a member of the WBSC Women's Baseball Commission from Australia, and I'll be your host for this session. Um, I've been involved with baseball for longer than I care to remember, from grassroots through to high performance, touring teams, community development. I was a national team athlete, coach, and more recently a technical commissioner. So uh, I'd like to begin tonight's or today's session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that I'm hosting this seminar from, which are the Larrakia people in the top end of Australia. Uh, as this event, uh, the, this event is being broadcast internationally, I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and the world and recognise and celebrate the importance of all our cultures and connections. So we have six seminars uh, tonight. Uh, today's one, um, today and then we have one every week for the next six weeks all of this time slot we are going live on zoom on facebook and youtube and we are streaming all around the world for some like me it's heading close to midnight and others will be just greeting the sun so it's pretty amazing to see how powerful technology can be in connecting us all particularly in this current environment and acknowledging the challenges that many countries are having around the world so I hope you all enjoy this seminar and you come back for our future ones. Today's seminar is about starting a women's baseball program. Um, we'll then be following with coaching female athletes, off-field opportunities and careers that women can have in baseball and a live chat with some of our dec most decorated female baseballers. A favourite topic we know is going to be a deep dive into Japanese women's baseball and then the last in the series will be insight into how Major League Baseball is developing the women's game in the USA. Um, some of these sessions will only be open to Federation members and some, like this one, will be public. If you are directly involved with your Federation, you can contact them to get access to the WBSC Academy and if you're not, then just stay tuned to the WBSC social media and you'll be able to find out when the next public sessions are. So um, before I introduce our speakers, I need to share a little bit of housekeeping with you. Apologies if I'm speaking too fast for either our English as second language or interpreters, because we are uh, translating this from Spanish to English and vice versa today. So I will try to keep my voice slow to help out with the interpreters. Um, if you're participating by Zoom, there is an interpretation button on the bottom of the screen, which will help with the translation from English to Spanish and vice versa. Um, also, just like to let you know that as part of the development of this series, we surveyed all the WBSC member federations to get a guide of the, some of the questions that they wanted to ask on this live Q&A. So thank you to all those that responded and we will be starting tonight's session with asking the panelists the questions that were submitted. But we also really want to encourage you as our live viewers to post your own questions and comments. I can almost guarantee you that any question you want to know the answer to, there's somebody else out there also wanting to know the answer to that question. So please go ahead and ask and our panelists will be more than happy to answer. Uh, and if we can't get to your question uh, during the session, we'll endeavour to get that back into the comments later. Um, so I have got through that. So I think I'm going to get to the most important part of tonight, which is introducing our panellists. Um, I hope you've all had a chance to watch the videos prepared by them. Um, I've had a, a great time watching uh, each of the panellists uh, stories and it's just fabulous to see the diversity and the difference in each program, how it's been developed, the outcomes, but I think the thread throughout it all is the passion that everybody for the game. We all have passion for the game of baseball and we know how important it is to develop the women's 
So I'd really like to start by, um, um, they've been doing a power of work in their own space. And um, I hope you've all had a chance to have a look at the videos and uh, to hear their stories to start with. But if not, uh, it, they'll all be available afterwards and you can go back and have a, another listen to them. Uh, I think it's just also really um, exciting to see how many people have the love for this game and the value that women's baseball brings to the sport as a whole. Don't we love technology? My internet just decided to be working fine for the last couple of hours and it's just decided to get a little bit unstable. So hoping you can all hear me still okay uh, and um, we're still going live. So I'll get on to the introductions. Um, our first panelist hails from France. Uh, Lucine Benamida is the French national team manager. Welcome Lucine. Uh, how are you tonight? Hello. Very good, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be with you tonight. Thank you, Lucine. Next, we have Amanda Hocking, who is the Great Britain National Team Manager. Welcome, Amanda. Hi all, uh, thank you for inviting me. It's a yeah, pleasure to be here. Great. From Mexico, we have Juan Jesus Martinez Martinez. Uh, welcome, Juan. Gracias, muy buenos días. Es un gusto y un placer estar aquí presente. Muchas gracias. Es un placer estar presente. Muy buenos días a todos. Thank you, Juan. Again, sorry for technology. Um, to Maybe we can continue the presentation. Yeah, just between us. <laughs> yeah, Rob. Okay, I'm going to turn off my video in the hope that uh, it might help my video connection. Sorry about my little raccoons there, maybe not that professional, but. I'm going to uh, round out our panel to welcome Rod, who is our closest neighbour to Australia. How, good evening, Rod. How are you? Uh, good evening. Yes, I'm fine. And uh, I thank you for having me in this uh, webinar. And I'm excited to tell our story. Thank you. Excited to have you here. So I do have to um, mention that with a bit of a heavy heart. Um, we originally did have a plan to have a contribution from the Indonesian Baseball Softball Federation, who have been working really hard to develop girls and women's baseball uh, over the last five or six years. We'd invited Mr. Julo Din Jain to speak and he had recorded a video for us. Unfortunately, Mr. Jain passed suddenly earlier this month and we extend our condolences to the Indonesian Federation on losing a valued and wonderful member, and we mourn his passing as a friend and a passionate advocate for women's baseball. The legacy Mr. Jaying brings is that he was instrumental in the changed Federation policy to allow Indonesian girls to play baseball when historically they weren't permitted, 
It's an enormous little leg legacy that he's left behind. So rest well, Mr. Jain. You'll be missed by many, both in Indonesia and around the world. I am going to try to um, put my back video back on again. Hopefully it's a little bit more stable now. Um, so we can see that we've got a lot of people uh, here want, having a listen. Um, so we'd like to acknowledge you all, um, remind you that we have the English and Spanish translation, and please feel free to um, add any questions into our, into our chat. Um, so we'll, with no further ado, we will get into answering some questions. So Lucene, we'll start with you. Uh, how do you see a women's program being different from a men's? Oh, Let's see, you mic. need to un mic. yeah, unmute yourself. Mike is on now. That's just good. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, in France, the the um, the program, the women uh, uh, baseball program, is different from the the men program for a couple of reasons. I mean. Uh, it's um it's kind of I can't say it's more easier to uh to coach and manage the girls uh, different with the with men I used to to uh, coach both so uh, I can't say that the difference is uh, clear for me it's easier for a, a coach to manage and get practices with with girls because they are very uh, focused on their on the goals and the the techniques and they they, they learn a lot they they listen better than men for me it's a, it's a very big difference and they can execute easily what the what you ask so that means it's, it's very easy to coach girls that's why thanks that's that's wonderful thanks Lucene. amanda can i throw to you um for your thoughts on the difference between a men, men's and a women's program yeah, so it, very similar actually uh, as to, to coaching uh, females to the guys but i think with the GB program over here, um, there's not much difference. And, and I like that as a player uh, and as a manager. I think we, we set our standards high and um, the girls shouldn't expect any different to the guys. So um, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And I think it, it, shouldn't, it should be very similar uh, for men and women. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely um, a challenge because it's obviously a new team. Um, but yeah, the, the, the standards and uh, is, is just as high and it's really nice to see that we're on the same level. Fantastic. Um, Rod, I will, I'll ask uh, you your thoughts as well. Yeah, uh, uh, Lucene said it uh, really well, no? Uh, actually, women are more uh, on details. Men really don't. Uh, care so much about details and just execute uh, your, your your training but uh, the ladies they really ask you uh, all the details that you should have. so it's so exciting to teach them and they execute them really perfectly and that's why I, I enjoy more training the, the women and then the men uh, thanks thanks Rod and, and Juan, I will pass to you for, for your answer on this first question. Sí, eh, en México pues, es más in, interesante trabajar con las mujeres, ya que ellas ponen todo su entusiasmo y atención a cada una de las jugadas dentro del, del campo cuando se está llevando a cabo el entrenamiento. Y, y sí es muy importante eh, toda la atención y toda la... la La, toda la atención y toda la sabiduría que ellos tienen para adelantar dentro del juego. ¿no? Yeah, they, they are really great insights, everyone. And I think just to add to that, one of the things that, that I've seen and I guess experienced myself is that particularly starting out and the women have not been given many opportunities. So when they come along and somebody is there willing to provide information uh, and support and coaching, then, you know, we, we always jump on it because it's, it's not something that's just assumed or automatic or that we've just, um, as has happened for, for boys and men, 
um, in for many years is it's just the way it is. So definitely for for women having people wanting to show us how to play and give us that information, you know, we we take it with open arms. So thank you. That's a great a great start from everyone. I really appreciate that. Um, Amanda, I, I'm going to throw to you for the next question. Do you have one key tip for federations um, on how to promote their new women's baseball program when they're starting out? I think uh, if, you, if you're going to start out on a, a new program, I, I would simply just do a game, just get a game going, um, invite all the players. I mean, over here in the UK, uh, when I first started out WBUK, um, I knew 25 players across the UK. Uh, so I decided to host a, a game. Everybody from all over the UK turned up, um, flew in as well, and they loved it. And it grew from there. It really did. Um, and I just think if you give them the opportunity to, to play, um, it will thrive. The, the girls will lead it themselves, to be honest, um, and they want more. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll definitely want more from it. So, yeah, just just host a game. That's, it's, that's how it starts. Great. Excellent. That's a really simple tip to make it work. Um, Juan, have you got any thoughts about one key tip for you for Federation starting out? Sí, sí, es muy, es importante, eh, como dice Amanda, realizar juegos en, en las ciudades en donde no se está llevando a cabo. Eh, todo eh, inicio debería, debe demostrarse y, y, y de una manera el juego presenta toda la diversidad que tiene y se entusiasma más a las, a las interesadas y, y para llevar a cabo eh, la, la inclusión de, cada, de las niñas o jóvenes que, que desean estar en este deporte. Thank you. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, showing it into places where they haven't seen before um, one of the statements about women's and girls' baseball is that, you know, you, you can only be what you can see. And so if you can see it being played out there, then that's a big start. Um, Lucine, uh, have you got any comments on or comments or key tips for federations on how to promote their sport, the women's game? Yeah, I think it's kind of the same of uh, other uh, uh, friends uh, right here. But uh, here in France, we are... Uh, we organize a like try tryout. That's why right, a camp, a baseball camp uh, specifically for for women and girls depends on on the ages. And um, to have more uh, like fun in this camp, we invited uh, some very good women players from Japan. So the three mm -hmm. best players uh, in the world. So it was attractive for those girls to come you know, in Paris and uh, have the opportunity to see and watch the best women players on, on the world. So it was very positive for us. Yeah, definitely seeing um, the best is very inspirational. Um, Rod, and to round out this question, have you got any thoughts um, on how to promote? Yeah, I think, uh, well, we were surprised actually that we had to form a team within four months so that's that's what but we we just had to uh, recruit all over you know the especially softball players you no know, but for me the best way to start if you really want to start a program start from kids you know and start from schools because again schools are already institutions so they can uh, put up a team easily so if you can come up with a tournament with four at least four schools and then that's that's the beginning. Like uh, I started a, a youth or a schools tournament thirty years ago, and I started from two schools and two teams. No, now I have a hundred teams and thirty schools in our our program. So uh, I'm glad. No, this is uh, happening again. Then maybe I can duplicate what I did with my baseball program, youth baseball program and make it a youth girls baseball program. Yeah, that's definitely good advice as well. Um, Juan, I'll go to you for a question on, could, do you recommend a, a, a starting out with basic fundamentals, uh, the grassroots, 
or focusing on high performance and the elite end of the game? Es para el, la enseñanza de las jóvenes que están interesadas en practicar el béisbol femenino, pues es, es importante iniciar con lo básico, eh, ya que pues podría llevarse de una manera más interesante con ellas y aprenderían más lo que es eh, la integración dentro de este deporte. Obviamente, pues es un deporte que, que tiene diferentes posiciones y, y tendrían que aprender cada una de ellas, por lo tanto, pues se inicia con lo básico y ya con las intermedias, pues se puede eh, trabajar eh, lo más importante que es cómo se, cómo se desarrolla este deporte. Yeah, definitely. And that's a really good point about the positions because it's very easy um, to just uh, put people in positions to start out with and then they get stuck in that and there's no development. So really doing those fundamentals across for everybody, you might find out that the, the person that you thought was your best shortstop turns out to be your, you know, a catcher or a pitcher or a first base. So um Lucine, knowing that you in, in France that you put together a program that then, you know, fairly quickly also went to a, a European championship, you know, if you had your choice, would you recommend starting on the basic fundamentals or getting stuck straight into finding high performance players? Oh yeah, we we'll recommend uh, to to work on the on the fundamentals for each part of the game. I mean, defensively, pitching or hitting, the same because uh, you have to be consistent to be you, to win games. You know, it's it's the the beginning of the program for us. Only two years, you know, so they have to uh, learn to uh, to um, how to play easily, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in a game, in, you have a good defense with a working place, you can win some games, you know, if you made some, I mean, uh, 15 errors in a game, you lose. So it's mm -hmm. easy, it's mm -hmm. simple. So need for amateurs to play at any level, so at the best level to the to the low level. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rod, when you recorded your video, you talked a little bit about um, your softball, softball players had good basic fundamentals, but they didn't, uh, they didn't have the pitching skill. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you developed the, your pitches? Yes. Uh, well, that was uh, really one of our challenges then. No? Nobody knew how to pitch. So we had to really uh, start from scratch, no? the basics, first strengthening, because the ball will not reach, definitely the ball <laughs> will not reach the catcher. <laughs> and it's a good speed, you know. But then, you know, that's like, a, that's why I talked about details. These women really wanted to learn. And because they wanted to learn, they wanted de them to have it perfect. <laughs> that's why I'm really amazed, you know, working with them. But they all had to start from scratch. I mean, all the movements, especially the movements, the movements, there is only one way to throw the ball and we all have to learn that and that is why it's not just just throwing you know the way but there is a way to throw the ball the right way so that's how we started from scratch and everybody should i think mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. sure yeah um and amanda in great britain you've had club baseball and women playing co-ed baseball for, for many years. Um, how did you then translate that into, into um, you know, growing, growing the women's game? I think um, here in the UK, we've had um, some amazing players across the UK. Um, we might be limited in numbers in them, but just going back to like the previous question, I think, why not do both? Why, you know, why should these great players miss out on an opportunity to play at a championship? and wait another four years now. Um, I think let's just, let's just do it, let's open it up. Um, and, it, and it would grow women's baseball as a whole and attract attention. And not only that, it will inspire the next generation of players. And, and that's what's important to help this sport grow. And I, I think, yeah, 
this this work on both and use the players that we've got with co-ed uh, leagues and now an all women's league. Um, so yeah, just just why not both basically? Uh, yeah, so yeah, hopefully. and you can see that you've you've started the um, you started it with just women in the co-ed and then you've now been able to develop the women's the women's competition and and that's a demonstration of her of growth so it's really interesting to hear how everybody has done um it all a little bit differently um so uh where are we at uh so one when you started the program so um one i'll i'll throw to you on, again on this one when you start have started the program how do you keep them coming back Aquí en México, eh, la situación de, de nuestros estados que son bastante productivos en el béisbol más, eh, de hombres, ¿no? Entonces hay situaciones de, de juntar a las muchachas dentro de, un, de una ciudad y, de, y en llevar a cabo los entrenamientos. Ahorita estamos trabajando en cada uno de los estados, eh, los compañeros que están inmersos en, en la... En la en trabajar con las niñas para que el béisbol femenino eh, sobresalga eh, de una manera más, más eficiente. Eh, tenemos muchos en cada, en cada uno de los estados, tenemos ya eh, entrenadores que, que, que están volteando con las niñas, inclusive se han formado ligas en, en algunos estados como Monterrey, como Chihuahua, como Yucatán, que ya tienen ligas eh, integradas a todas esas niñas y jóvenes que les está interesando el béisbol. While, while you're talking, Juan, um, how many girls would you estimate, girls and women, would you estimate are playing baseball in Mexico? Eh, ahora mismo en México no tengo el número exacto, pero hay muchas mujeres eh, entrenando béisbol y jugando béisbol, inclusive en algunos estados se están jugando en ligas con hombres, porque no, no, no tienen todavía eh, la formación de una liga femenil, pero sí hay mujeres que están eh, inmersas con los hombres para desarrollar sus habilidades. Okay, yeah. Uh, Amanda, in the UK, just while we're on it, I'm just going to throw out, I know this wasn't a pre-prepared question, but um, do you happen to know your numbers in the UK? Oh, mute. Fail. Um, I say it's up to 200 now, uh, easy. Um, yeah, which is, that's, that's grown from 25 uh, in three years to, to nearly Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Hopefully that can continue to grow. Um, the scene in, in France? Uh, in France, we have uh, like 14,000 people who play baseball and softball in, in general, mm -hmm. I mean, and a mm -hmm. um, lot of girls playing baseball and softball, both, but around uh, maybe a little bit more than, uh, yeah, 100, one, yeah, 100 play only baseball, but not specifically on the uh, woman team, I mean, girl team, only mixed with, the, with men right now. Yeah, yeah, and Rod. In the Philippines, uh, I'm not sure if you're a COVID affected, but how many women would you say you've got? Yeah, it's actually funny because women playing baseball in the Philippines is just my team, 20 players. Because after that, I really wanted to implement a program or start recruiting or making aware the, the public aware of the, the uh, existence of uh, women's baseball in 2020 but as we all know all our plans were halted uh, during that time not around March and I had so many plans re lined up ready for implementation but uh, that's it no but again you know I I'm very confident you know if, if that yeah. plan uh, starts moving because it's been proven with with softball and uh, kids, uh, kids baseball, 
But again, our advantage is we have a lot of softball players. Mm. And the Philippines is really uh, into softball. So we have girls softball, so easy to recruit. Now I have to fight for the best ladies in <laughs> with softball. Yeah. <laughs> and, so and I think that that's um, fantastic for the people out here out um, watching us live and and recorded is that each of the projects demonstrate that each of the programs that are at a different stage and they all start somewhere um, and then they, they grow and it's the, the passion and the desire and, and working hard to, to develop it is what counts and, and the perseverance. So um, I didn't, didn't finish off asking um, Lucene, how do you, once you've started the program, how do you keep the, the players coming back? Oh, we I, um, we organize. I mean, uh, a tournament or, or games um, during the the, win the the summer season. So to keep to keep um, working with those girls, you know, like like a camp, for example. And uh, we try to uh, uh, during the off season to keep them on online with the courses or you know meeting meeting online. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. can we can talk about baseball and we can can talk about technical uh, part of the game, um, like every two weeks, for example, like two hours meeting online on Zoom, and so we can keep contact with with them. Yeah, good, good. Um, Amanda, any any thoughts being from you on that one? Yeah, I, I would say just to keep them engaged. Um, like women's baseball, the community is is very unique. It's very much a family and, and in, internationally as well. Um, I've got a real soft spot for the Aussies, um, as they know, and I'm looking forward to this weekend. Um, but just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are all one big family. And I think the more we engage with others uh, in other countries, it, it just grows stronger. Um, but yeah, and interact with clubs as well. Um, highlight their players, you know, give them a sense of belonging um, and be proud of them. So, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, fantastic. And I'll just throw in a little plug there is that, um, Amanda referenced that the Australian women's baseball is having our first um, professional women's league game, um, which is a prelude to our uh, national league happening. It's been rescheduled three times. This is the fourth time now, thanks to COVID, but we have the Adelaide uh, Giants playing Brisbane Bandits tomorrow in Adelaide. So if you are able to tune into that, that'd be great. And I hope I was okay to plug that. Um, so. Um, Let's go with uh, Rod. When you started out your program, what support did you get, whether it was monetary or support from media, government, or just people in their resources? What, what were the main supports and what was really important? Well, at the start, you know, we, we did not have support because, again, it's something new. You know? uh, nobody knows about it actually and, and every time we approach a sponsor they would say is there a girls baseball we know there's a girls softball but baseball you know so we had a hard time no? but important thing there is to keep on you know persevere no he must have fortitude in, in uh, getting something across that's why we fought for awareness no we went to different media outlets. We went to social media, and because these girls are uh, my players, were, were were young, and they were so used to social media, so they they started bringing it out, no. And especially our office, the Paba office, Philippine Amateur Baseball Association, was able to to move, no, their network to to tell everybody about this. And eventually, you know, the government, especially the Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Olympic Committee, saw the 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 value in what we're doing, and uh, supported us. And again, we came back and showed them that we really did mean business, winning third again in Asia, which mm -hmm. we are very proud of. It's time. Fabulous. Yeah. Um, Juan, in Mexico, what, what support did you have, um, monetary or otherwise?
I'm hoping Vivian is going to be translating that in a moment. Sí, el, el, el apoyo ha sido de personas interesadas en el desarrollo de, de este deporte en algunos estados como Yucatán, por ejemplo, en un inicio de, 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 del desarrollo del béisbol recibieron el apoyo del gobierno y poco a poco el gobierno, obviamente con la con la eh, participación de la Federación Mexicana ha, ha ido recibiendo apoyos en los campeonatos que se han realizado, campeonatos nacionales donde han, participan, han participado 11 de nuestros estados, en algunos hasta 12. Entonces sí ha recibido apoyo del gobierno, de patrocinadores y personas interesadas en el desarrollo del béisbol femenino. No, that's excellent. That's, that's really good. Uh, Amanda and Lucene, have you got anything to, to add to that one? Okay. Uh, I, I just made, uh, made it uh, hard uh, by throwing uh, it. Sorry, you. Messi. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, the support that we had from the British baseball community, uh, all the clubs, all the coaches, we're all volunteers and it's been phenomenal. It's been absolutely incredible. And I, I, I couldn't thank them enough. Like, it's just, yeah, the GB coaches straight away uh, was, was out there with a helping hand, um, get their hands basically stuck in and, and uh, get to it. And um, yeah, yeah uh, absolutely brilliant, brilliant to see their support. Yes, for me in France, kind of some of Mexico, we have the, uh, the support of the government of France and specifically the Ministry of Sports. Uh, give some uh, credit to a specific uh, women sports in general and in baseball too. And uh, our federation, it's a big support. I mean, the program started with uh, our president, Didier Semine, who did a lot for women in, uh, in our country, in baseball and softball. Mm -hmm. And um, we have also the, the support of the people in general who, who believe in, uh, in women baseball in France. And that's why... Uh, uh, for the first European Championship in France in Rouen two years ago, where a lot of people came to the games and uh, 3,500 people during the final game. So it was very positive for us. Yeah, it's great to get support from, from everywhere. Just while on that support, how, when you, um, this is kind of, I'm going to throw this out to all of you, when you were first starting out or when you were approaching government, do you have any tips on that you could share on on how to get government on side? Anyone want to like comment on that one? Put you all on the spot. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I actually want to know their story so so I could use it. No, but for me. If you show your your passion you know, for for something, and uh, you know your seriousness on something, a, a project, I think uh, these agencies, government agencies, will realize that. You no, know, they would see through you, and if and if again you you start uh, announcing or uh, keep uh, the news coming, you no. Know, uh, about what you're doing, then they, they will they will they will see it. They will. And I'm sure they will start supporting you. Any? Yes. I guess. Oh uh, yeah, last thing. Yeah, for us yeah. in France, uh, uh, the communication or the strategy with the Ministry of Sports was simple. We we just uh, talk about the equality of chance. I don't know if mm -hmm. it's understandable. Yeah of chance yep. to play baseball or softball for men and women. There's no, yeah. uh, you know, obligation to play baseball only for men and softball only for women. So we just argue on, uh, the, uh, with the government to say, okay, everybody can play baseball and softball in France or women or, or men. That's, that's what simple strategy and it works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things I know that we've done in Australia is to approach many different parts of government not just the ministry of sport so when you're running events um the tourism uh tourism departments when you're 
looking for um, support for the under underprivileged or undeveloped areas of the country. Uh, for in Australia, we we could often look for money from um, the multicultural sector of the government. So I guess that's one one tip that I would put out there is that not just thinking about the Ministry of Sport, but what other ministries are, are interested in in what you can offer. Um, so that that's one thought for, from me. Um, we're coming to the almost. I've got one more last question that's done from the federations, and I can see that we have got some questions coming in, which are going to be really interesting to get the answers to from our panel. Um, and it's it's been great so far. I'm really enjoying listening, and I hope everybody out there is also enjoying listening to our panelists. So I'm going to go with the question. Um, I'm going to throw it to Amanda on this one. If you had uh, the chance to start your program over again, is there anything you would do differently? Ooh, um, I mean, it's tricky because obviously when we started, COVID kicked in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, there was not much we could do development wise on the field because we were in lockdown. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's all I can say really to that because it's just, we, we did everything we could to to adjust to that and, and go with remote training. Um, so, so I think, you know, where we're at now is, is how we would have done it and uh, I wouldn't have changed that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sane, anything you would have done differently? Um, pr probably play more games before, uh, you know, um, competition. I mean, uh, we didn't have the chance to uh, bring a team a long time before the European Championship. Maybe it was mm -hmm. a bit tough for us, but it was successful. But it would be better for girls to uh, be prepared, you know, for the mental part of the game, I mean, and, and have some really uh, competition before. So more games, organize more yeah. games in the country or all around uh, Europe, for example, could be could be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, Juan, I'm going to ask you a kind of similar question. Um, you know, we know that we need training um, to learn the fundamentals, but we also know that we need games to to learn how to deliver in at game speed and situations. Uh, what's your thoughts on on balancing training and fundamentals with playing, just getting out and playing games? Yes, sí. eh, obviamente, para desarrollar el juego hay que jugar. Tenemos que participar en esos juegos para, para poner en, 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 en práctica lo que se enseña a, a, previo a los juegos. En México, en cada uno de los estados, eh, como mencioné antes, se han estado formando ligas deportivas en donde las niñas eh, jóvenes llevan sus entrenamientos con sus coaches, con sus entrenadores, y posteriormente pues juegan en, en, en fin de semana, ya sean sábados o domingos, que son los entrenamientos de lunes a viernes, y los sábados y domingos juegan su partido dentro de cada una de sus ligas en nuestros estados. Eh, no todos los estados tienen ya desarrolladas las ligas, pero en, en cada una de, de nuestros estados se está trabajando para consolidar eh, la liga de cada uno de nuestros estados. Yeah, that's great. And and Rod, um, given that you've got a fairly small base, how do you how do you manage the the balance between training and games? Well, actually, we uh, I wanted actually more exposure internationally because we didn't have any again no baseball no women's baseball in the Philippines, so we wanted to be exposed to the women's game. Actually, we were playing men. <laughs> in uh, men's in, in the, the Philippines we had to pass through that but when we went to the tournament it was well it's not really totally different but at least the pitching was different and like men you no know, because uh, our our players were exposed to very fast balls right away so which they, they were scared to to hit the ball uh, but uh, when they when they went to China they, they were relatively easy for them now to, to hit the slower balls, but I really hope we had more uh, women to play with to, to get the feel of how the game is played. Yeah, 
And that's kind of answered. Um, one of our, one of our viewers here has is, is actually put a question in, in the box a, a little while ago. And um, uh, Amanda, I might throw this one to you, is that uh, Faraja Makale, he says, uh, I would like to know that the way the women play baseball, is it the same as men play duck baseball or is it different? So, so in women's baseball, we actually uh, have seven innings for a single game, um, whereas obviously like co-ed or men's is nine innings. Um, but no, the, the rest the rest is pretty much the same. Um, we do, I've noticed WBSE do have their own women's rules. Uh, there's some regulations with the bats. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the same game. It's, it's simply baseball, but with uh, shorter innings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Lassine, what, what have you seen um, differences about the maybe um, tactics in the um, European Championship, the tactics? Is there anything you've seen differently there? Not, not a lot difference with men. I mean, uh, just probably uh, defensively, organized a little bit differently for relays, for example. You show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, distance and they don't have a lot. Some of our fielders couldn't have the strong arm, I mean, to a long throw. And so we organize differently the relays on, on the bases, uh, basically. And then defense was tough because the distance are longer than softball for softball players who came on the team, for example. It was a little mm -hmm. bit surprised of uh, the, the, the distances difference. And, uh, but pretty much the same for the rest of the, the tactics. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Juan, have you got any thoughts on that one? No, no hay, no hay mucha diferencia. La, también como comentaban, eh, yeah. la barda de home run, eh, obviamente está un poco más cerca que la de los hombres, pero eh, mm -hmm. prácticamente se lleva igual que el de los hombres. Eh, la, la, en algunas ocasiones las muchachas le ponen tanta intensidad que es muy interesante verlas jugar. Mm, yeah. And it, I think it's interesting too that tactically um, you, you actually see more differences from different countries or and different styles than rather than the gender. Um, the Asian countries generally bunt, you know, bunt and run um, the, the US and Australia, we, we, we try to go to the long ball, um, which, not, which is not a gender thing, which is just a, a how, how your country approaches, approaches the game. So um, I, I'm really excited about the answer for this one because we have talked a little bit about um, Philippines particularly uh, recruiting softballers and, um, and, and, you know, generally we, we do see in baseball that there are a lot of women that and girls that play both. So one of the, the questions here, and now, now I've said that, I've, um, I've lost the question. Why would, a, why would a player choose women's baseball over women's softball? Does anyone want to jump in and answer that question? Because baseball's a better game. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> I was so hoping someone would say that, but uh, yeah. Um, why is it better in your mind, Amanda? I, I just, yeah. I, um, I, to me, I, I grew up wanting just to play baseball. Um, living in Cornwall, um, there's not much uh, opportunities to play either softball or baseball. Um, I, I've never actually played softball, so I, I shouldn't really say that, but... Um, <laughs> For me, it's just personal preference, um, just watching the game on TV and, and wanting to be part of that. Yeah, sure. Uh, and Rod, you, you've, you've actually actively recruited softballers. So, so why have your softballers either chosen um, baseball over softball or decided to play both? Well, it goes to your uh, convincing skills you know, or persuasion <laughs> skills no but but uh, actually you know in in the Philippines you know I mean in men's uh, baseball and men's softball when when you retire from baseball you go to softball because the transition is easier and you become a better softball player 
you, you become really good softball player coming from baseball. So if, if the, the women, you just try to convince them, don't go to softball first. Why not <laughs> go to, to us first? Learn all the basics, learn all the, the things you need to learn. Then if you still decide to go back to softball, go ahead. Um, and I will assure them that they will be become better players in, in softball. So that's one convincing factor. No? But again, like I said, I love teaching kids. No? So that's why I go to schools. I, I convince them. You're so, you have softball players. Ask them where do they want to start. No? <laughs> softball or yeah. baseball. Then they can, they can choose. They have a choice actually. Because there's a lot of girls now playing softball. So it's just, you know, a choice. Yeah, I think that's really important that it is, it is about choice. And, and I don't see it necessarily as choosing between baseball and softball, but, but just making a choice of something. If you love one game, you, you play one game. If you love the other game, you play the other game. Mm -hmm. If you love both, you play both. Yeah? Yes. Um, Lucine, have you got anything to add to that? We've got a few questions coming in, and I think we're going to probably just go for about 10 more minutes. So, um, Lucine, any anything else on that? Yeah, about this question in France, it's a little bit different. I mean, uh, in, in our clubs, um, the little girls under uh, six years old, for example, they start with baseball and not, and not softball right now because we don't have enough uh, um, girls to bring teams uh, specifically in softball. That's why they start with, with, with boys to play baseball um, under six. And after that, uh, they, they keep them playing baseball. So until the age of 14 or 15 years old, after that, they can have choice to play softball or keep keep it on baseball with with, your, with boys. Sorry, but that's why it's a little bit different. We they don't have really choice in the beginning. After that, they can choose whatever. Mm -hmm. And right now, in national teams, we have a lot of softball players who are interested to play with the. With, in baseball national team because they always when they were younger they, they played baseball to start so and they want to be back to our, mm -hmm. our love of the game of baseball that's why yeah yeah definitely uh so we've got another question from uh saber he um saber says and one uh one i'll i'll put this question to you first uh, many countries in the world want to play women's baseball but the problem that without equipment they can't and never will. Have you got any ideas on how to get equipment? Um, it's in areas where it's you know there's not enough money, support, or resources. La, la principal idea que se puede tener es llevar a algunas representantes de, de, del béisbol femenino para que demuestren eh, cómo es el béisbol. Eh, y de ahí puedan interesarse en, en el desarrollo del béisbol eh, con, con pocos recursos eh, al ver que se está eh, interesados en, 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 en integrarse pues obviamente eh, las niñas y las jóvenes hay que mostrarle cómo se juega inclusive pues también a los entrenadores para que se interesen más en desarrollar eh, cada una de las niñas y jóvenes Thank you. Thank you, Juan. And and that's, you know, showing and demonstrating is really important. Rod, have you got something to add for that? No, I, I wanted to add, no? I, I Philippines is also one of those uh, countries who very hard to get the equipment. And there are very many uh, underprivileged communities around around here, no? So, but we are uh, actually already recipients uh, of donations of uh, equipment, particularly from the countries of Japan, Korea, and the United States. Uh, actually, there was one time when I had three containers of equipment, but I, but I was supposed to pay for the, the, the freight and uh, we didn't have enough money then to, <laughs> to uh, for the freight so it was diverted to another country so i think you know we can work with the wbsc on that and then 
maybe we can come up with something that uh, collect whoever needs uh, equipment mm -hmm. and I can help out in sourcing uh, this used equipment no well some are new also some some the donations are new but most of them are used equipment because after the season this these kids from these rich countries really dump all their equipment and the new new uh, year's uh, equipment will be in again no? so i'm willing to help that's fantastic thank you thank you for that offer rod um amanda or Lucine, have you got any um, thoughts on how they can yep amanda I think using social media um, and connecting with the women baseball world again, the community is so strong uh, and powerful. Um, there's somebody called Victor Buxton um, who was in the same position. Uh, he's done incredible uh, to, to highlight this issue. And um, I, I think by reaching out to International Women's Baseball Centre as well, they can offer some tips um, to look in for some funding and maybe try and get a GoFundMe page. Uh, to help support them and to get that equipment to them. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm keen to help share any posts and stuff and, and get that sorted for them. Fabulous, that's great. Let's see. Yeah, uh, in France, we have uh, the chance to have some suppliers of uh, baseball uh, support equipment in the country and all around Europe, I mean, Netherlands and Italy, for example. But uh, mm -hmm. there were some um, uh, activities, I mean, association, can bring some used equipment and can give for free to uh, people who need really uh, not in specifically in our country but can, can help outside the country who, have, who don't need so maybe it could be with I'll say Amanda in uh, social media you can you can find this this kind of association can help a lot with this uh, equipment yeah that's uh, and then the other one that um that came to mind in that was that you know if you are just starting out and you're wanting people to learn the basics that you know the WBSC has developed uh, baseball five which basically needs no equipment um, it's a modified version of the game uh, and and it's a way you can get people interested in a, in a fast moving game that's you know that's a modified version of baseball and um, and that can then lead into uh, into more um, I've got a couple more questions here. Um, Arif is the Pakistan head coach. He would like to know, how do you work with girls in Islamic countries like Pakistan where girls want to keep distance from the others are in, are in a hijab? How, um, have any of you experienced that? And um, could you share uh, anything in that regard? Not, not really, not really expand on uh, in these topics, but uh, okay. we have some girls, uh, Islamic girls who are included, in, I mean, in a, in, a, in, a, in a team, so we don't have any uh, adjustments to, to make, you know, during practices or during games. I, th I think it's a, a really good question, and um, I, I don't have an answer for it now, but I think it's definitely something, I'm, uh, you know, we can look into and and yeah come up with a solution to solve that yeah um when we were running uh, the diamonds in the rough program in indonesia we had a lot of girls um who were in hijab and um who also uh, took breaks during the day to to do to go to prayer um you know these i actually think baseball is a is a fabulous game for for people that want to be covered up because you know, we wear we wear long pants. We wear hats already. Um, he, the girls just wore the hats over their um, hijab um, and you know long sleeves. And and we really found that it it, it didn't it, there was no barrier for them. Um, I do know that in Canada, I'd have to find the link. And and Lisa Turbot may be on this link right now, and she'd be able to to post for us. But in in Canada, they've actually developed a Nike. Uh, version I'm pretty sure it's Canada and Nike um, I hope I'm okay promoting that um, a sports version uh, so that it makes it a lot easier it's um, it's uh, sort of that you know 
what kind of material is very anyway it's, it, it makes it a lot easier and and it's really encouraging for women and um i might try to post a link at some point later or a chair there's a group in of women in canada who are, who wear them and and play i actually think they play softball and baseball together so um i think it's not a barrier arif and uh thank you thank you for your question uh there is another question in here um, about uh, supporting women's representation on federation boards of directors and assuming leadership positions. I'll, I'll take this opportunity to sort of, uh, we'll probably put this question up again in uh, a couple of weeks in the session around off-field and career development, um, because that's, you know, leadership positions and uh, that, that off-field section. But while we while we have you all here, how do you how do you help get women I'm going to go to Rod on this one. And you need to unmute. Narelle, sorry about that I, I didn't hear the question actually we were, oh. we, yeah oh okay uh so the, sorry the question was uh how do we support women's representation on federation boards and encourage women into leadership positions oh uh, actually uh that is part of the the, the training this uh, my, my players have no I what I tell them is that all of you will become either uh, coaches or uh, trainers or even uh, organizers of uh, different tournaments and even uh, officers of the uh, baseball organization in the Philippines and because of your training now no so not only we teach baseball but we also teach uh, leadership which is forms part also of the training in, in baseball no? because you learn a lot of virtues in, in sports no? in general therefore you use this uh, virtues you've learned and will uh, do it in your life no in, in your life and this is for your future too so yeah that's that's excellent thanks rod um juan would you do you have any comments on um how to develop women in leadership positions for in mexico uh, see, in, in, in mexico uh, las mujeres que nos representan en el béisbol uh, tienen son 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 muy líderes uh, tenemos bastantes jugadoras que que se distinguen con esa con esa eh, actitud que tienen inclusive muchas de ellas ya están trabajando también con, con la enseñanza para niñas en escuela, en escuela para niñas de 5 o 6 años entonces ellas demuestran también de lo que han aprendido eh, lo transmiten a, a, a muchas niñas que, que ya se están integrando dentro de las escuelas que, que se han implementado en cada uno de los estados y pues eh, su liderazgo está más, más que renombrado ¿no? mm. Excelente, that's great uh, We do have to start wrapping up so Lucine or Amanda do you have any um, anything specific you wanted to mention about leadership roles and, and developing women? Ok just said that uh, our new uh, board of the French Federation now uh, it's composed by uh, half of women right now. It's the first time for us, so it means a lot, you know. And uh, it's not they're not just for softball side or baseball side. They, you know, both for in general to uh, promote uh, our discipline in the country. That's it's um, I think it's a, a good uh, example for all the participant of the, the federation you know in clubs and to see that the federations it's 
lead, leading by women and men to both. Yeah, the, and the diversity of, of opinion and, and thought that that brings is, is fantastic. Amanda, any final words for you, from you? Yeah, I, I think, like you say, it's, it's important to have a, have a divide. Um, there's also, um, obviously with my GB staff, um, I've, I've selected all guys. Um, and it may have disappointed a few girls. However, I've gone with experience and I would, I would expect the same back from the guys, you know, you go by who's most qualified. Um, and I, I've got every intention of, of getting these girls uh, to gain that experience and, and qualification so they can be at the top level um, you know, when they're ready. But at the minute, we're so limited because it's so new. Um, but it will definitely change uh, very soon, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. All right. Well, it's been absolutely a pleasure listening to you all and your insights um, on, on top of the videos. Um, I would like to, to thank you if you all for yeah for your contribution today um i also like to congratulate you all on the fact that you you know you and your federations have created women's baseball programs like that's you know it's a big step forward um compared to you know five uh, ten years ago five years ago even two years ago we're seeing more and more coming and and the interest we've had in this seminar means we we're excited that they're you know we're in a prime position to grow with the women's game exponentially once we get over this COVID or even during COVID, um, so many opportunities um, and more opportunities for women um, every day. Um, I, I really want to acknowledge Amy Park, who has done a power of work behind the scenes to get this seminar up. And, um, and she's just, we wouldn't have had any, any of this without her. Um, Acknowledge the WBSC for continuing continued support of women in baseball. I think the WBSC really understands and, and values the the women game, the women's game, and women's ability to contribute to the game overall. And um, this is this is an enormous recognition um, of the importance we just talked earlier about gender diversity and and the impact that has on society and community. So. Uh, Thank you all to everybody that's either watching today or, or watches it later on uh, with the pre-record. Um, you know, you're the people that are going to create the next programs or you're out there already creating the programs. And we, we hope we've given you some um, wise advice and, and, and uh, inspiration to go out there and, and continue to grow or to start it out. Uh, I will just give one last uh check in with with everyone is there you know one last thing anyone would like to to leave us with a piece of inspiration um uh, to finish up the the seminar today yes if i can stop thanks no well, just i yes. just want to thank yeah i just want to thank a lot uh, my friend uh, andre lachance from baseball canada mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of people knows him but he's um is a, a good part or big part of our success in France in the women baseball. It had a lot, a, a lot, two years ago for a national program. So it was, uh, was uh, amazing. So he, he keep working with us a little bit and um, with distance. But uh, thank you, Andre, for for your participation, your help. And second thing, just to say that we uh, we are proud to uh, organize in France uh, the next European Championship of women baseball. Uh, next year in 2022 in Montpellier, south of France, my my city. So um, mm -hmm. I hope you uh, will come and see us uh, and watch games. Mm -hmm. I hope in uh, online. So um, it will be a a big moment and a, a good moment for uh, women baseball next year in Europe. Yeah, oh, we'll all look forward to that. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah. One, have you got uh, any final insights from Mexico? Agradecer a la, la invitación a, a participar en, en este webinar y obviamente eh, invitar a todo, a todo el mundo, a todas las personas a, a integrarse en este programa de, de béisbol femenil. ¿no? Eh, las mujeres están muy interesadas en participar en, esta, en este deporte y hay que darle todas las oportunidades para que se desarrollen y lleven a cabo todo su... Toda su, 
su deseo de, de, de estar siempre presentes y, y mostrarse dentro de este deporte. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. And thank you also, Vivian, for your excellent translation. It's been fantastic today. Um, Rod, last words from you. And then I think we nearly, we're going to get kicked off any moment. <laughs> yeah. No, my advice to all the women or girls who want to play baseball, you know, keep that fire burning. No, You know, don't lose hope. We'll all be back. I'm very sure we'll all be back playing and uh, I hope to play against all your teams again uh, one of these mm -hmm. days so be hopeful that uh, soon you will see each other in the field that's all yeah. thank you let's all hope that and Amanda as our as our only female panelist um, I'll give you the the last word thank you um, just want to say thank you for inviting me and uh, arranging this it's, it's been amazing and it's a pleasure getting to know the rest of the panels um, I just think don't be don't be afraid to fail. I think if you give you know provide an opportunity out there, just give it a go, see what happens. We announced a, a, a women's baseball league with no teams, and we've got eight teams. So just just, just do it. Just provide opportunities; they'll come. Um, to steal the famous words from someone else, if it if you build it, they will come. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Good night. And um, we hope to see you at our next seminar next week. Uh, that with with everybody's friend Andre Lecount uh, around specifically coaching women in baseball. Thank you and good night. All right. All right. Muchas gracias.